Hey guys, it's Thomas Rene again, uh, head of voice and speech at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. I'm here to talk more about the tongue. Uh, my last video I talked about the geniohyoid and the genius glossus muscle. So if you haven't watched that, feel free to watch that one. Today I want to talk about the uh, superior and inferior longitudinal muscles of the tongue um, and look at two separate actions that we haven't looked at yet. Okay, so first let's identify them, talk about that theory, and then we'll bring it right into the practice. Okay. Uh, so, if we remember correctly, we already talked about that geniohyoid muscle there, and the genioglossus, which is that kind of entirety of the tongue underneath. Now we're really going to look at the top surface of the tongue, not necessarily the surface, but the muscles on that top part of the tongue. Yeah, right in there, not really underneath. Uh, so the first ones I want to look at are the superior longitudinal. Superior meaning up on top and then we'll look at the inferior is down on the bottom so longitudinal coming down the length of the tongue so the superior muscles are actually on the top of the tongue and the striations the lines are coming down the tongue like this okay pretty simple hopefully the inferior ones are doing the same exact thing they're coming down the length of the tongue but instead of being on top of the tongue they're going to be under the tongue Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So on top and then the bottom, superior longitudinal muscles, inferior longitudinal muscles, okay? They are on both sides, so it's uh, bilateral, okay? And I'm going to sh uh, share my screen so we can see an image that might not be 100% clear, uh, but it might give some people some insight. So this is... Uh, hopefully you can see me so you can, yeah, I think you can look at my face. This is an image of the tongue as if I was sticking my tongue out at you, like a little kid. And then we're going to cut off, cut it off. And then we're looking in, into the tongue when it's sticking out at you, yeah? Mm -hmm. And we're looking at the front side of it. So what we have here, oops, let me change the color of this marker. There we go. What we have here. Here is the stuff that we talked about in another video that is the uh, genio uh, hyoid and the genio glossus. And so we're not looking at that. What I want you to see actually is within the realm of where I'm drawing now, notice how it's like dots. Yeah. That is the superior, oops, sorry guys. That is the, uh, the dots up here. That is the superior longitudinal muscle. And the reason why it looks like dots like that is because if the tongue's sticking out and we cut it off, those striations are coming down the length of the tongue. So when we're cutting that in half, we're only seeing those, those striations would be coming out at us. Um, then down here, let me get rid of some of this. Down here, we see a similar picture with those dots all, all around. Notice that this is underneath the tongue. And so that's going to be in our inferior longitudinal muscles. Again, longitudinal coming all the way down the length of the tongue. But because we're cutting off that tongue in this image, we're only seeing those lines coming at you. So you only see the dots, just like with the chopstick in the image with me, right? If we're thinking of those muscles being very long, but they're sticking right at you, you don't see the length of the chopstick, you just see it as a dot. And so those muscles are just like that. Point being, they come down the length of the tongue. That's the important bit, okay? So, as we know, the way muscles work when they contract, the striations get shorter. And so the superior longitudinal muscles, if we're going to contract them, what happens is the tongue tip curls backwards and the entire tongue, let me do this, and the entire tongue curls up. The inferior muscles do the exact opposite. They're antagonistic muscles, so they do the opposite action. So if this is the tongue straight out, it, the inferior longitudinal is going to curve the tongue down. So here's a superior. First, we're going to stick the tongue out, then go to the superior longitudinal muscle. We have that upward curl of the tongue. Uh, inferior longitudinal.
Yeah? And you can see that extra curl of the tongue tip coming down as if it's trying to touch my chin. Um, normally, moving into the practice, normally, uh, uh, a while ago, I used to say, touch your ch chin and then touch your nose. Not that everyone can do that, but it was just an image. But then what I realized is if I go to do that image, this is what happens. I want you to watch the jaw. Yeah, I'm hoping that you're seeing that there's a lot of jaw movement for that action if I'm really trying to reach all the extremities. So instead, during your practice of this, these particular muscles, I don't want you to think of that image necessarily because of what I want you to do is try to keep that jaw as steady as possible. And then when you move the tongue, you're actually isolating those muscles and working them as hard as possible for yourself so that you're really learning the difference between what the tongue does and what the jaw does. I think this is one of the hardest relationships that we need to deal with when we're looking at uh, speech work, but really understanding how a jaw release is, the work of the jaw, and then how the tongue can work in isolation. And so when they come back together, there's a beautiful harmony and speech becomes so incredibly intelligible. So I'm just gonna give you a little look at that. We're gonna work it very slowly so you can first feel it. I'm just gonna go up and down. I'm hoping what you're feeling is the contraction of those muscles, the superior longitudinal muscle contracting and the stretch of those inferior longitudinal muscles. And then the inverse of that, the contraction of the inferior with the stretch of the superior. Yeah. And so again, adding that into an exercise, perhaps once you get a little bit better control, or I'd like to say collaboration with your body, maybe you just want to add some counts or just some snaps, something like this. Yeah. Excellent. Remember to keep breathing while you're doing that. And also remember just a, a gentle head neck relationship there as well. It's very easy, especially doing any of these tiny exercises, to really want to jump the head forward, tense the jaw. The better you get at moving this tongue, the better the relationship will be with not just the tongue for speech sounds, but the tongue with the entire system. And that's really what we're looking at. Not just these isolated things, but how these isolation exercises come back into the whole system, how the jaw relates, how the throat relates, how the voice relates, how the breath relates, how the connection of the cervical spine to uh, the cranium relates, all of that stuff, okay? Well, guys, that's it for the longitudinal muscles. Um, keep practicing on those and keep getting the distinctions of all the different little muscles of the tongue so that you can start combining those for all the speech sounds that you may be exploring uh, in your language studies and your accent studies, okay? Awesome. I'll see you next time. Okay. Keep, uh, keep practicing. That's what I always say.